In this tutorial video, we're going to go ahead and evaluate a given algebraic expression at different variables, or different values for the variables. You can see in this case we have a fractional algebraic expression with several variables going on, an m, an r, a w. We're going to plug in a lot of those, or all those values, into this algebraic expression and simplify it down. This skill belongs to the group pre-algebra. I kind of wavered on this, didn't know if I should say it was arithmetic or algebra. It's pretty much in between an arithmetic and an algebra skill. Uh, what we're doing is evaluating an algebraic expression at given values, where the algebraic expression involves three or more variables, and there are several operations going on, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and even a power in there. There are several prerequisites for this skill. You should know, obviously, arithmetic. You should be strong with that. There's no, uh, no question about that. You should know how to substitute a value for a variable into an algebraic expression. That's the same thing as evaluating an algebraic expression at a specific variable. You should know the order of operations, that PEMDAS business. Uh, PEMDAS stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. It actually is somewhat misnamed, uh, which we'll talk about when we get into the example itself. And finally, you should be able to simplify fractions in the end. You always want to simplify your results. And I'll talk to you about that once we get to the end of the example. The first thing we're going to do with this algebraic expression is go ahead and substitute in the values for m, r, and w that are given to us. Now when I do this, I generally rewrite my original algebraic expression with parentheses where there were variables. This just guarantees that I'm not going to make a mistake. Of course, you also have run the risk of having a lot of parentheses. But at this point, inside the parentheses that's next to the 4, we'll replace that with what m should be, which is a negative 9. The next parenthesis over, which was supposed to be an r, will replace that with a negative 3. Now downstairs in the denominator, the first set of parentheses uh, right after the plus sign is supposed to be a w, which will replace that with a 4. And then you go in this inner set of parentheses here, and right before you subtract 1, that parenthesis in there is supposed to be an r. That's a negative 3. Now at this point, we're going to follow the order of operations. Now what we often use as some type of way to remember the order of operations is that PEMDAS business, uh, where P stands for parentheses or grouping symbols. And this is where it gets a little bit uh, incorrect because, uh, already in fact, because there are several things that are considered grouping symbols that most people don't talk about. In reality, grouping symbols uh, are things like, well, parentheses, or braces, or brackets, or absolute value signs, or the inside of a square root, or uh, the inside of uh, any type of root, third, fourth, fifth root, that type of thing. So there's a lot of different kinds of grouping symbols out there. So parentheses is kind of a bad name for that. The next one in our order of operations is stands for exponents, the E there. But even that is poorly named. Because in that parentheses step, you focus in on the innermost set of parentheses, you do all that work in there, and then once you're done with that, it doesn't tell you what to do with the, for example, the square root itself, or the absolute value itself. You've worked on the inside of it, but after you're done working on the inside of it, what do you do with those symbols? So I like to call this the machine step, where we can just let those machines run. So if you have a square root of 9, you can now let that machine, the square root machine, run. It takes the square root of 9. Or if you have the absolute value of a negative 7, you can let that machine, the absolute value machine, run. From that point forward, the rest of the uh, order of operations is actually properly named. M and D stand for multiplication and division. Just remember that this is done from left to right. And then the A and the S stand for addition and subtraction. And again, 
those are performed from left to right. Now let's look at our expression here. We have a major grouping symbol, that would be this fraction bar. It groups this problem into two different groups. We have an upper group and a lower group. So let's work on the upper group for the moment. In that upper group, I'm going to look on the inside, so let me highlight the upper group actually. In this upper group right here, I'm going to look at the inside of those parentheses, because that's the order of operations. You look at, on the inside of those parentheses. In the first set of parentheses, I have a negative 9. There's nothing that I can do in that first set of parentheses. So I will leave that alone. In the second set of parentheses, I have a negative 3. And again, there's nothing I can do on the inside of those. There's, I'm not adding or subtracting to it. So uh, that's just left as negative 3. So the parentheses step in this case is done. Now I will concentrate on exponents or machines. So I look from left to right here and I see that the only machine I have going on is the squaring machine so I'll let that run. So we have 4 times the negative 9 minus. I rewrite everything else in the problem except for what I'm going to be working on. And then I ask myself what, what, what does a squaring process mean? Well it means negative, it means take that object which is a negative 3 and multiply it by itself negative 3 times a negative 3 is a positive 9. Alright, now I'm done with all the exponents in the numerator. Now we go to multiplication and division. So reading from left to right, I take care of any multiplication or division. And I see 4 times a negative 9 immediately, that turns into a negative 36. And I will not have any more multiplication or division. And finally, I'll do my addition and subtraction from left to right. Negative 36 minus another 9, I'm at a negative 45. And now I'm done with that group. I now focus on the lower group. And so let me go ahead and highlight that. So now we're going to focus in on this lower stuff down here. So in that lower group, I start looking through and I'm looking at the innermost parentheses. For example, I'm looking at this 4, there's nothing to do in there. I'm looking at this negative 3, there's nothing to do in there. But that innermost parenthesis of a negative 3, that's nested inside another parenthesis. So I do see that we have a set of parentheses right here that can be worked on. So let me go ahead and bring this up here, and we'll work right here. This is equal to, the numerator is just a nice little negative 45. That denominator is still, I'm going to rewrite everything that I'm not touching. And I have a negative 3 minus 1, which turns into a negative 4. And now I will go ahead and, since I've taken care of innermost parentheses, I don't see any exponents, so I'm going to ignore that. Now I'll take care of any multiplication or division. So I'm reading it from left to right, and the only multiplication I have is 4 times a negative 4. So that equals negative 45 over, I'll rewrite everything, and now I'll take care of 4 times a negative 4, which is a negative 16. So now multiplication division is done, and now I'll take care of addition or subtraction, again from left to right. 25 plus a negative 16 is actually the same thing as 25 minus 16, which would be 9. And so we had now successfully simplified both the numerator and the denominator, both those groups. Now the last step I need to do is make sure that this fraction can be simplified or, or is simplified if it can't be. And it turns out that 9 actually divides nicely into a negative 45. It divides in a negative 5 times.